Good afternoon. I want to thank everybody who joins us in Ukraine Media Center, Ukraine Forum. My name is Olga Atomanova. It's day 358 of the full-scale invasion of the Russian occupiers in our homeland. Yesterday, the occupiers, unfortunately, exercised another missile strike on the infrastructure of our country and we will be talking about the situation in Lviv region. Joining us online is Maxim Kozitsky, military governor of Lviv region. Good afternoon, Mr. Maxim. Good afternoon, Mr. Maxim. What are the consequences of the missile strike on the infrastructure of Lviv region? Well, there was a strike on the infrastructure facility, critical infrastructure facility in Lviv region in Drogobych district. The object is the facility is not connected to the power grid. There was a consequent subsequent fire, which was put out shortly. People were in the shelters, so there were no casualties. A couple of residential buildings were damaged, which were close to the epicenter of the strike. So we will help the community in reconstruction. Well, talking about the situation from the beginning of the full-scale invasion, can you give us a figure about the number of d d destroyed facilities and buildings in the region? Well, all the strikes which were exercised on the in, in the region were a, targeted against the faci critical infrastructure facilities and some of the installations of the residential infrastructure is the 14th strike and but the most sufficient damage was inflicted on the critical infrastructure specifically electric power supply f facilities well, we were talking to the head of Uker Energo today, and it was said that the situation was stabilized in the power grid. Well, talking about the Lviv region specifically, do you f feel that the access to the electric power supply was improved within the last couple of days? Yes, I really appreciate all the efforts of Uker Energo and all the services for what they have done. We have no breakdowns with the supply of electric power within the last days. The schedule of electric power supply is in compliance with the limits allocated for the Lviv region. And I do hope that we will be able to receive such amount of power. But it all depends on the further strikes which will be committed by the enemy. Well, it's been almost a year of the full-scale invasion. Lviv region became a shelter for many internal refugees from all the corners of our country. So can you give us a couple of comments on what's going on with the internally displaced people? How many internally displaced people are there in the Lviv region for the time being? Have they found new jobs? What are their needs and are they covered. Well, the peak time for the people who were forced to leave their homes and to leave for Lviv region, it was back in May and June last year. And it's more than 600,000 people. The, the official figure is 200. 50,000 internally displaced persons who were registered, but according to the data by the mobile carriers, we can uh, draw the figure of 350,000. Well, unfortunately, there is not enough free space for billeting for all those persons. We, but under the municipal program, we repaired a number of residential buildings, the dormitories of the higher educational institutions, but we will try to create all the comfortable con conditions for billeting of our internally displaced citizens. More than 40 different foundations, charity foundations from different countries are engaged in repairs 
in current repairs and capital repairs of the venues which can be used for billeting of the internally displaced citizens. Yesterday we opened a another residential building which can a allocate about 100 persons and we appreciate the help of a charity foundation from Malta, from the island of Malta, who contributed to the repair and funding of the repairs. Well, internally displaced citizens is not only minus, it's not only a burden, but it's also a plus because many businesses moved to the Lviv region. I think that many of our citizens moved their small businesses and reopened them in the Lviv region. Can you evaluate any effect in, in terms of uh, contribution to the local budgets? Is there any positive influence in this regard? Thank you very much for this question. We would, it would be our pleasure to retain those citizens in Lviv region who will wish to stay here. So we reopened more than 250 small businesses lately, and they really contribute to the local budgets. Uh, as to the private individuals within the last year, more than 15,000 private individuals were registered in the region within the last year. Thank you for this information. We have questions in the on the floor. Good afternoon, Irina Mamshur, Ukraine Forum. You've just said, and the mayor Olviv also mentioned it, uh, about the damage of the facilities of power infrastructure. So, so that we mentioned that all the substations are either damaged or destroyed in Lviv and Lviv region. Is it so? And if it is, then how is the region supplied with electric power for the moment? And another question is about the internally displaced citizens, but I, uh, let me ask it later. We're well, talking about the substations in the Lviv region. We have a huge number of substations. So there are substations which submit to regional supplier and there are those uh, submitting to the Ukrainerga. And there are also substations which belong to Ukrzaleznica, for example. So I, I don't really know about the substations that Andriy Sadovy was talking about. We continue repair works on the substations, and it's true that many of them were targeted for even a couple of times. There is sufficient damage on some of them, but there are thousands of them in the Lviv region, so I cannot say that they're all either destroyed or severely damaged. As to the internally displaced individuals, I'm curious about the their bulletin. The, you mentioned this new bulletin recently opened, and, and I've heard about the m module towns opened for the internally displaced. Do you have any such information? Maybe some of the big regional centers will have such m module towns built there and open there. I do appreciate all the support of the territorial communities which take part in the reconstruction of the of the facilities for the internally displaced persons. And there was a module town opened near in, in Lviv during summer and spring, but the people can also live there in winter. And in some territorial communities we help and co-fund the projects where it is necessary. Within the last year, we created 25 installations and about 30 such module towns were created in the region. There will be new regional program implemented this year together with the international organizations for construction or reconstruction or such facilities for billeting of internally displaced citizens. Mr. Maxim, thank you very much for joining our broadcast. 
Thank you for finding time, dear colleagues. I'm reminded you joining us was the military governor of Lviv region, Maxim Kozitsky. Our next briefing is at 17.15. Joining us will be Irina Verishuk, Vice Prime Minister, the Minister for Reintegration of Temporarily Occupied Territories of Ukraine, and there will be a presentation of the project of the new state policy strategy on internal displacement until year 2025. So bear with us, trust in our armed forces, and work for our victory. Glory to Ukraine.